Hey guys, how you doing? It's January and it's way too cold. There's snow everywhere. Oh, way more snow than I'm ever a fan of. The amount of snow I'm a fan of is zero snow, of course. Hate snow, way too cold. Oh, it's just everything about it just ruins all my travel plans, ruins everything. I hate it. Hate snow. Not a big fan. That said, um, today's tutorial is going to be on particle effects. Um, very, very, very common request. Um, honestly, not something I know too much about, but I've just, you know, told myself a bit about just so I could, you know, do this tutorial for you guys since it was very commonly requested. And um, I'm going to show you basically how to do the one thing I've used particle effects to do before, which is to create uh, a snow effect in your game if for some insane reason you, you want snow in your game. So all we have here is the platform game that we had before in the... Um, the 40 minute special I did on platform games and collisions and stuff, uh, go watch that if you haven't already. Um, and basically, it's already set up and working, so if I compile this now just to show you, woo, there's really pretty snow falling everywhere. Everyone loves snow, don't they? So yeah, we've got some snow particle effects and they're falling and kind of giving a little bit of a wiggle and stuff, and it all looks very nice. So. How do we get that going? All we have is, uh, like I said, it's the platform game we had before, and the only difference is we have this object called obj underscore snow. Doesn't matter where we put it, it has no sprite or anything, um, so it just shows up as this little question mark inside a blue circle when something doesn't have a sprite. And that's how it shows up in the level editor. And that's obj underscore snow over here. So if we double click that, We'll see it's it's only made out of two events. I'm gonna show you show you both of them. Um basically in our create event what we need to do is basically three different things. We need to create the particle system in the first place, um like, and embed it into sort of the memory. So like uh, the game knows it has a particle system going on. Create a particle type for that um, particle system, so we create like the snowflake and we set up all the different random properties it can have, the direction, speed, and all that kind of stuff. And then all we do is simply turn the emitter on by we, we create um, a particle emitter in a specific region where we want the particles to appear, and then we tell the game to start streaming particles from that emitter. So let me walk, walk you through this sort of step by step. So, um, what we're doing at the top here is basically establishing the particle system to exist in the first place. We've created snow equals part underscore system underscore create, which uh, creates a particle system in the memory of the game, and it'll stay there and be referred to as snow. Um, they do take up a bit of memory, so you have to make sure that when you're you're done with your particle system and you destroy the object, you do run this line, which is part underscore system underscore destroy, and then in brackets snow, as you can see, oh, semicolon, um, so that like it gets rid of it out of your memory and it's not sort of sitting there. Otherwise, it can create you know you don't want it eating away at your game. So that's how we create sort of a system, and all that is is just a blank template right now for us to put information into about how the particle system works. Um, part underscore system underscore depth. Um, here we're setting our depth to 50. What this means, and depth is kind of an important concept to understand in Game Maker generally. Um, you'll notice every object um, has like a depth setting, um, like every object by default has a depth of zero and uh, your backgrounds like uh, I think like by default like in tiles and stuff yeah they're by default set to like a depth of like a million or like a hundred thousand so that like how depth works is when is basically the draw order of the object so and it's kind of like relative and arbitrary so if you all like if an object has a high depth it will be drawn before an object with a low depth. So things at a higher depth are drawn before things with lower depth. What that means is that because our backgrounds and stuff have a really high depth, uh, they are drawn first, so all the backgrounds and stuff are drawn first by the game, and then all your objects are drawn second, so your objects are drawn on top of the backgrounds. Um, like if 
they were the same depth and stuff, you would have backgrounds overlapping your objects and that kind of stuff. It's basically how the layering works in your game. Um, so if you want, like, because all objects by default are set to a depth of zero, if you want something to appear in front of everything in your game, um, what you need to do is just set your depth to like any negative number, like negative 50 or something like that, and it'll be drawn after everything else and therefore appear in front of everything else. And the same says if you want something to appear behind everything, then you need to set it to a positive depth, like positive 50, and it'll be appear behind all of your objects, so you'll need to set it to like positive a billion or something to uh, put it in front of backgrounds or just raise the depth of your backgrounds, you know, so on and so forth. So, what we're doing in our snow system is we're just setting the depth to be 50 so that it appears behind all of the objects in the platform game I mean we could set it to something like minus 50 if we wanted it to appear in front of everything which you might you know um, but for now we're just gonna have it appear behind everything so we'll set the depth to 50 I mean that could be anything could be like 5,000 or whatever it doesn't matter um, it's it's only relative it's only important what this number is relative to what the depth of everything else in your game is so I mean the fact that everything is zero means um, I can just set this to 50 and I know that it's going to appear behind everything other than the background. So yeah, that's how depth works and that's so we've created a system and now we need to put a particle type into it. So the very first thing we do is just say uh, give our particle a name and just say snowflake equals part underscore type underscore create. So we've created a type of particle. Again, it's completely blank, it doesn't have any settings set up, and we need to set a ton of things. There's a million of these types of settings, and you can set like loads of different things when we set blending and alpha and all that kind of thing. But mostly uh, we're just gonna set up like the shape of our particle and we're gonna set up some basic settings of how we want that particle to behave. And um, so we're going to set part underscore type underscore shape, which um, sets the type of particle we want to be PT underscore shape underscore snow, which is a built-in built-in particle, which looks like a snowflake, which I'll show you if I go to part underscore type underscore uh, shape. In here you can see all the different types of uh, built-in particles you have to work with. Um, if you use something like part underscore type underscore sprite, you can use your own sprites as a particle. But I mean, if there's one, if one of these built-in ones is going to work for you, then it's, there's no harm in using one of those. So, um, so yeah, I'm using the snowflake one over here because it looks like a snowflake. So. <laughs> that's, uh, that's why I'm doing that, so that now we've told, uh, Told the game what sprite to use for the snow for each uh, for each particle, and then I'm going to make various modifications to how it behaves. So I mean, orientation will do things uh, with its angle, um, size. Well, I'm going to just run through each of these in a sort of very basic sense, and then kind of explain how they work. So size will sort of affect how big or small the snowflake is, like at random. Like how these lines of code work is they take a minimum, like generally anyway, some of them work in different ways, but they'll take a minimum value and a maximum value and it'll pick a random value in between those two for each particle. Because obviously you generally want each particle to be a little bit different, like you know, lots of little little like if you're doing flames or whatever lots of little sparks lots of big sparks and stuff so like you know they're varied and they go in different directions and different speeds and you know they disappear at different times so that you create that kind of random and sporadic effect so you're creating minimums and maximums and then the game is picking somewhere in between them for the behavior of that particle um and then there's a bunch of little flags on the end and other other kinds of settings you can set so that maybe your size the size of your particle increases over time or like uh, there's a wiggle in the size like they get bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller you know and the only really way to really way uh, the only way to really learn those things um, is basically just to use the F1 menu and go to part underscore type and to sort of, you know, browse through all these different settings and um, different options and functions you have and uh, basically find the sort of effects that you're looking for because there's a lot of them. I can't possibly hope to sort of go through them all in one, one tutorial. So, 
Um, so yeah, we're setting our size to be uh, sort of a random value between 0 0.05 and 0 0.025 for every snowflake made. Uh, the speed to be something between 1 and 1 1.5 and um, to also increase by 0 0.05 every frame so that it falls a little bit faster and faster and faster. You know, there's a sort of gravity, you know, impacts on the, the snowflake. Um, the direction to make it fall straight down, like I've just set the minimum and maximum to be the same so it falls straight straight down um, and I've also set our wiggle to be 4 so that um, while it is falling straight down it also kind of varies every f like 4 frames or something like that. it's either the amount of frames or the amount of pixels I forget exactly how that that one um, argument works but it's something like uh, it'll move like 4 pixels to the right then 4 pixels to the left and 4 pixels to the right so it creates this sort of wiggle zigzag effect as it falls down the screen part underscore type underscore life uh, and that's just saying how long the, each particle is going to live for so um, between 100 frames and 150 frames um, so when the snowflake is made it'll pick a value between those two like 112 and um, 112 frames after it's been created it'll be destroyed so you know you can make, make each one live for different lengths of time so now we've set up everything to do with the particle itself um, we just need to create an emitter and actually make it snow. So we're going to create an emitter for our snow particle, which is to create like an area on the screen and um, sort of a distribution method and like a number of uh, particles per frame to make sort of thing. So that's what our emitter does. So we've got snow underscore emitter equals part underscore emitter underscore create. Again, that's just the same as this thing and the same as this thing, just sort of creating the variable that we can refer to as a particle emitter. And then we're basically going to give that emitter a region from which to create its uh, particles, which is going to be like this kind of uh, rectangle, like based on sort of the room width, that like rectangle at the sort of top of the screen. Um, it's going to create them sort of in like uh, an ellipse area, so like a sort of circular area. And um, then all it needs to do after you've created the region where you're, you're streaming your particles from is basically tell the game to actually start streaming them so you know you have this region set up and you just basically basically need to set tell the particle system to go so this is going to say to start streaming um, using this particle system um, using from this emitter and this particle type and then this number here is the number of particles you want to um, uh, sorry my mind just blank it's the number of particles you want to uh, create every frame um, so if I set this to something like five it would create like five snowflakes every single frame but like because I wanted to kind of create like a subtle sort of gentle snowing effect I want a, a very small number every frame um, so that means I, you know, less than one every frame. I just wanted there to be a chance of a particle being made every frame, so that there's like a really slow sort of creation. And if you set this to a negative value, like what negative seven means, it means every single frame there is a one in seven chance, like a like a you know ratio of like one to seven every single frame of um, a snow particle getting created. Um, if I set it to something like seven, it mean it would actually create seven particles every single frame, and there would be a lot of snow. Like, I mean, let's just run that actually, I'll just show you. Like, there'll be a lot of snow <laughs> when it's set to seven because there's being seven made every single frame at 60 FPS. That's that's a lot of particles. So instead, I had it set to. I mean, it just depends what kind of effect you're after, really. Let's say it's a very very uh, customizable system as a particle system. It's actually pretty cool. Um, so that every single frame there's a one in seven chance of you know making a making another particle. Um, either that, or it might work by saying just make one every seven frames. It might do that. Cause yeah, that might be how it works. With that. <laughs> I don't remember exactly. Like I said, I'm not a hundred percent familiar with this system, but I mean everything like. When I wanted to learn the system, like I didn't look like I didn't have to look up a tutorial on it because there's, uh, all I did was say, "Hey, there's a particle system game maker now." I wonder how that works. So I just typed in particles into the help system, 
came to here and I was like, oh, particles. And pff, there's, there's a whole section in here that kind of explains how particles work and it explains it really in depth, explains all the limitations, um, explains exactly how they work and how they're going to interact with everything else in your game. Notably that they don't. <laughs> particles do not interact with anything. Um, and you know ex exactly like how the best ways to use them and stuff like that and it shows you uh, like t teaches you all the different sort of uh, lines of code teaches you everything i've used here really particle systems shows you all of these lines of code everything like that can all be found in in the uh the game maker studio help menu like totally underrated help menu <laughs> just hit f1 there's so much information in here like ridiculous like if you can't like i don't really actually use the contents thing a lot which you would think would be better because it's all you know like um split into sections generally when i want to find out about something i just go straight to the index and type in like something like particles and like it'll guide me to a page like this and it'll be super useful i actually probably find it quite hard to find all that stuff in here i'm sure you can but it's just a personal preference i always use the index i mean not that i want to encourage you know the fact that you don't technically you know, need me on my videos, please subscribe, please view. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> technically, you can learn a lot of stuff just through like this index. So I mean, this is how I learned it. So I mean, but that's basically how you set it up. You create your particle system here. Um, you create the types of particles you set up, all the behaviors of that particle. And then you just create an emitter, and you make it emit, and that's all in the create event of uh, this object. So I mean, you don't want to be creating a particle thing or setting your emission every frame. That would that would probably be horrible. Um, <laughs> so um, and then you know once you're done with it, you just clear it from the memory by saying pile system destroy. So um, it cleans it out of your memory, and that's really that's pretty much all there is to it. Particle systems. So, yeah, I hope you guys have fun putting all sorts of fun particle systems into your game, and uh, death to snow. Yep, that's really all there is to it. See you next time, guys.